Greetings, friends, and welcome to a fun and exciting build. Today, we are going to be building a minecart. Why? Because I think it's awesome. But this is actually going to be built fully out of wood, so it is robust. It can take some hits, and I'm actually going to make it into a flower planter, which I think will look freaking awesome. So, first of all, as always, template down in the description. You will find everything that I'm talking about here to build this magical minecart. This video is gonna be split into two parts because the wheels and the base are a ton of work and I don't want to end up with it being three and a half hours long. Anyways, first of all, the first thing we're gonna need is we're gonna build the wheels, which believe it or not, is the hardest part of this whole build. So in the template, you are going to find this sheet here and it's drawn in such a way, you will actually have a center point on this. Now you have multiple ways of going about assembling this based on the tools that you have. I'm gonna go over both, so if you don't have access to the same tools as I do, you will at least have a fighting shot of doing this and making it work. So first of all, we are building this out of two by sixes because it's an easy accessible wood and it's cheap. I and mean, that's what sometimes the best thing. This hole here in the center is going to be two inches, which is going to match up with galvanized fence posts because that's gonna become our axle. You know, you always need to think ahead on what you're going to be working with. Now, you'll see how I have these holes drawn out in a pattern because this is how we're gonna drill it. Now, this is my favorite spade bit in the world. What is this? Uh, a speed bore, three quarter inch. The only thing I had to do is I had to sand down the top here so it doesn't pull in. I have more control of how quickly this thing digs through the wood. But if you use a spade bit, this one is absolutely amazing. And especially with the amount of holes you have to drill for this, you'll see why. So anyways, what you'll do is you'll take this template and you'll cut out this part here and this part here with a bandsaw or a jigsaw. But this line down here, if you have the ability to, if not, it only means you have a slight bump in the middle, you'll want to take the rounded edge of the two by six off. So you end up with a really flat beginning. So when you put this template up against the bottom, you'll have a really nice flat like meeting spot, which you will see here. You can barely even see that line there. And that is my transition. And that's why it's so important to get rid of that bevel. If you can't, it's not the end of the world. Do what you can with the tools that you have. Now, you're gonna use this spade bit and you're going to, what I initially did, is I put this down like this and using any kind of nail or something, I marked my two by six all the way through each time. Gives me those marks so when I take this bit, I go through and I drill those three holes out. And what it does is it gives me a start for where I get to do the jigsawing. So you'll go through, and then when you're done, all like once you drill the three holes, I just drew that line there and there, and then use my jigsaw to cut through and complete it. As you can see, none of these are perfect, but it's a wheel, it's not the end of the world. Glue these together, and if it was just the glue holding this together, I'd be nervous, but there's more going on to make this whole wheel work. Now, this back part here, if you have access to scrap three quarter inch ply, it is the absolute best thing here. And you only need an 11 inch circle because this is a four and a half inch circle and this is an 11 inch circle. Uh, a while ago, I showed a video. Where is it here? There it is. I showed a video about this little doohickey. Now, obviously I've lost my other one, so I had to make a new one. That's how easy it is. And I just marked at the four and a half and then the five inches and this allows me to put a nail in here and then spin this to get my radius right around great for doing circles especially on plywood and the better part is is it gives you that center point so when you go to do your other drilling like the center hole you've got a starting point that matches the radius because if not it's pretty hard to find that center so once you go and you draw the circle you get this glued together and then you set this you're going to have that central point either via the template or you're going to have it from the nail hole that you put in to attach this whole thing together. And <laughs> I just realized I got my polka walker on. Oh, such a nerd. Um, <laughs> so once you've got this all put together, glued, 
with all this cut out, I went through and I used my router to give this just a little bit of a chamfer because it looks nice. It's not something that you have to do, but it just makes it look that little bit better when you actually go and paint it. Now, the one thing which I want to do next is how this thing all stays together. Oh, look at that. I don't even have the right one here. There's the right one right behind me. Now, you'll see here that I have a really nice radius of screws in here. I used these inch and a half drywall screws. Why? Because they're cheap and I've got thousands of them. And what I did is when I put this thing down, I marked along the edge, you can see it here, where those slats go, where the, 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 um, the spokes go. But if you can avoid this one, because this is where we have our joint. And God, you can barely even see here. There, that's better. You can actually see the joint on this one. I didn't put a screw through here because on the odd chance it comes through the back side, it might split that joint. But the reason why this piece of plywood is on the back is it strengthens up this whole wheel and makes it strong. Because I put glue in behind this, so when I glue it to the three quarter, it stiffens it up amazingly. And when the glue is, I put these down one on each tine and then one on the inside hub. So when this thing goes all together, when the weight gets put onto the central hub, it distributes it to the plywood, which doesn't have a gap into it. Makes a really strong wheel. Don't get me wrong, this isn't built for milking your backyard railway. If you ever do that, put a strap on here or something to make it so it doesn't destroy. But it makes it strong enough for 99% of what everybody does. So. Once you've got it to this point, all I did is I just put a little bit of sanding here to make this look nice. And the back here, you can see on this one, I used a little bit of wood filler. And this is my horrible wood filler. Look, look at that. I keep on throwing water in it to resurrect it. It, it is miserable. <laughs> but you know, waste not, want not. I'm not going to let that stuff go. I fill in the backs, get them nice and flat. We're going to be painting over it. In reality, you're not going to see the back. This is kind of an extra step. But on the front, you want to use some wood filler and fill in this gap if you have one. And then go around this edge here and put some wood filler in there. The main reason is it stops water getting in and you end up with a rock point. And this, this will weather really well once it's all painted. But, you know, you want to try to prevent as much damage as possible. Don't get me wrong. This is kind of a bad area because water can get in there. But where this sits on the cart barely has access to water. So, you know, it'll only last like 20 years instead of 50 years. You're going to build four of these. And this is why I'm saying this takes a whole bunch of time. And sorry if I'm being really verbose. I had actually gone through and I would recorded the parts of me doing this. And my camera here was on a spot on the table where... Everything I was doing was causing it to shake, so I had to I had to discard that. Merry Christmas to me on that one. Now, you'll see, once we've got it all done, we're going to get paint on it. And my painting on this one is using, not the French side, but I'm using stain, stain blocking exterior satin enamel. This stuff is amazing. I don't think I ever bought it, but hello, Miss Tint. <laughs> I got two of this and I never thought that I would fall, find a paint that I use outside that I fell in love with, but this stuff does it. This is a nice dark brown. You can barely even see the color there. It's a great base for doing like iron and the such because it's so dark of a base, but not so black that it completely blows things out. But you're saying, son, that looks like metal rather than looking like uh, brown paint. You are correct. Once it is dry, I put a coat of this dark bronze hammered paint and primer. This thing's going to be almost invincible when it's on there because it's got two layers of exterior paint on it, all sealed up on every single avenue, except you can see the back. There's the brown, actually, because I didn't finish that. Why would I waste my paint? Go through, make four of these wheels. Of course, everything's going to be listed in the template. As I said at the beginning, I just want to make sure that anybody who comes back and says, oh, someone, where is it? It's down there. It's always down there. I'm going to get these finished painted up now, and then we're going to go on to building the axle and the carriage for this week. I'll be back. Now, we're going to start working on the crib for where the wheels go into. And you have to understand, when we build this, 
all of the weight that will be pushing from the wheels up will be through this two by four. So when you see what I do, you'll understand that it's not the, st it doesn't look to be the strongest, but it's completely fine for what we're doing. Now, the first thing you're gonna need is just regular two by fours, but your best friend is going to be some 360 grit sandpaper. You want it to be really rough because you want to take the original milled surface. You can actually see the difference here. See that waxy surface here compared to this, which I sanded. You want to get down to the base wood because our stain, which is a vinegar steel wool mix, does not like the uh, the if it's not if it's not sanded, it doesn't take as well. So, anyways, so the first thing you're going to need. Of course, you looked at the template, you know what this measurement is. But if you don't, here is my like my lovely hand telling you exactly. You need two at 42 inches, and then you will need these at seven and a half inches. I did the corners on it. You don't have to. You can leave them square, but I think it just looks kind of cool with the angled corner. And what happens, this becomes the second half of the, like, the wheel chalk. Now... On the plan, this will be flagged as two by fours. If you have access to four by fours and you want to use it, you can. I'm just, I'm, I'm, this is a bit of an experiment. I'm going to see how this looks when I insert it in. But if you use two by fours, just twin them up and then put them in at the end when you go to build it. I'm using a four by four because I had it lying around since I built my chicken coop and might as well try to use some of it up. And what's going to happen is, is we're going to build it. Uh, let's move this out of the way. To look like this now you don't have to worry about like on the wheels if we have a gap here it actually adds character if we don't do it perfectly now these are 14 and a half inches in from the side so what you'll do is you'll cut your two by four you'll mark 14 and a half inches and put a mark then on these you'll put a mark at 3.75 inches and then when you go to glue them together you just want to make sure those two marks line up because it'll make sure that you have a good base I used a Forstner bit or a drill just to create a pocket hole for where the screw goes into. And I used wood glue underneath just to make sure the whole thing stays together really well. Then once uh, it has glued, I take my two inch Forstner bit. I'm going to, I'm going to revise what I said earlier. If you don't have Forstner bit, go get this two inch Forstner bit. It'll make your life 8 million times easier on this job. And they're this specific ones, not stupid expensive and so useful. Anyways, once I'm done, I mark it up and I drill the two holes through after this is glued together to guarantee that both my axles are at the exact same spot with the exact right depth. So now all of the weight, when it comes down, the axle will sit in here and the weight will be down on top of it here. And this here just looks cool and it makes it so if you ever have to pick up the whole thing and move it, this will hold it in place and stop the axle hopping off of your actual cart. Anyways, I'm going to get this assembled. Um, if you haven't already, get some vinegar and steel wool um, up here. There's a video I did about it. Start getting it brewing because our finish on this is steel wool and vinegar. And you need to let it ferment for a bit before you start assembling this all and getting it all painted. Anyways, make sure to sand your surfaces. I repeat, or sand your surfaces. If not, your outcome won't be as cool as you would like it to be. Anyways, I'll see you after this is Okay, assembled. as you can see... These are two inch fence posts that I use for the axles. And these are just your standard caps that fit on. And that finishes up the wheel. I found though that these are an 11 16th smaller than two inches. So I use a little piece of plastic in there to, wow, look at that, it's really getting. I put a little piece of plastic in there to make up the space difference to make sure these wheels here are very uh, secured. Now you're looking at it and you're going, that wood is pretty dark. This is the vinegar mix. And I actually tried it two ways. I did it with the vinegar first and then the tea. And then I also did it with the tea and then the vinegar. And I find that the vinegar first followed by the tea gives you a really rich tone, which I really like here. The only thing that I have is you'll see this on the actual plan. I realized that with these cross members, that when they go in, that they have nothing to attach to it unless I put this two by four down here so I can screw up from the bottom. And as this has potential to hold some weight, I wanted to make sure that somebody didn't push this and pulled those screws out. So I needed to have a little bit more support. So that's what's happening there. I want to get these in as per the plan, the three of them. And then once this is finished, we can start looking at the top. 
so this is as far as we're going to go for this video. The base is done. These boards are ready to go. They're just, if I didn't explain it before, they're just 2x4s that have been laminated together to give a good base. The extra part here, which I'm going to include on the plans, is this 2x4 here that gives support so I have something to screw this into. I'm going to get these all locked down soon, but the main thing is, is this is where we are now. It's a good place to stop. We are going to uh, let it sit, and I will see you on next video to get a little bit of that. Have a good one, all.